Captain Buzz flies a plane by using the audio jack in the audio jack alone. This means that you can put your phone into a plane, throw it away, and with almost no other electronics on board, the phone alone can control the plane. So by using the audio jack, what we can do is put a cable directly from the jack into uh, the plane's servos, and we generate a special type of music called pulse width modulation. Pulse width modulation is basically generating a horrible buzzing sound, which is where the name Captain Buzz comes from. These square wave pulses are then interpreted by the servos as traditional commands. So one of the initial problems that we had with Captain Buzz was that while she flew, she flew badly and would struggle even to fly straight and level. So I was tasked with trying to reduce the lag in order to make Captain Buzz fly much better so that she would turn from a pregnant duck into a fighter pilot. Now, one of the things that we found was that a lot of the lag uh, in the phone is not so much caused by receiving sensors, but by the fact that Android has not been made to fly planes around. So funnily enough, when Android was built and they decided to add audio music to Android, one of the key concerns was that when people listen to Taylor Swift, they don't want beep, 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 beeps being dropped, dropped, dropped. So Android actually has a policy whereby every app, when you send it audio data, it uses a technique called buffering to make sure that uh, all of the data is collected and stored by the operating system for a bit before it's actually played out loud. This is great for music, but when you're trying to fly a plane, you don't want this lag. And you don't necessarily mind if some of your square wave signals get lost. You just want to make sure that the time between them being generated and being played out of the audio jack is as small as possible. So the delay is largely controlled by the manufacturer of the handset. We found that some handsets were having a delay of around 750 milliseconds. Others were having a de delay of around 250 milliseconds. Ideally, to fly a plane well, you want to be around 120 milliseconds as a minimum. Now, one of the techniques that we employed to reduce the delay was by rewriting a bunch of the audio code so it no longer acts as a traditional app, but it's written using the C programming language. This means that we can avoid all of the buffering policies which are put in by the manufacturers and directly generate sounds which are sent out to, to the servos. So one of the things that we found is uh, when writing all of the audio generation software in C, we have a trade-off because we want to make sure that when we generate all these square waves, they align well to the natural buffers inside the audio controllers built into the hardware. So we've actually made some changes to pulse width modulations. The buffers inside the phone are aligned in a multiple of 18. So one change that we've made is rather than generating pulse width modulation signals, which repeat every 20 milliseconds, ours repeat every 18 milliseconds. So we can fill a hardware buffer, which means that we can reduce the lag even further. I have the Android Wear watch. Because we've used the Android operating system in order to write our app, uh, we can then write a very small amount of code in order to get the app also work on the watch, which gives some, uh, some really cool features, which you just don't see on other ways of making drones. As well as the time, we also have the current flight plan. So you can see at the moment that's straight and level because the flight plan's empty. However, what we can do is swipe to the side and choose between various commands, so loop, left-hand turns, and right-hand turns. At the moment, the communication is all performed over Bluetooth. The problem with this is that the range of Bluetooth is quite low. Now, the current watches that are on the market, most of them only have a Bluetooth link, but more of the ones which are coming out, such as the Apple Watch uh, and some of the newer Android Wear watches, have Wi-Fi as well. Now, the range of Wi-Fi is much larger than Bluetooth, so around 100 meters. So we can uh, connect to Buzz as she's flying around much more easily as Wi-Fi becomes more prevalent. So I'm sure you'll develop this further, but show me how it works uh, for the time being then. So initially she's trying to fly straight and level, which is the default command when we haven't entered anything. For instance, we can perform a left-hand turn and you just tap the button and she executes a left-hand turn. Similarly, we can do a right-hand turn and then the, the flight surface will move. Now if we scroll back, you can see now that she's banking right for, th for five seconds, then left for five seconds. And she just keeps repeating this flight plan. So in the air would be banking left and banking right. A cool feature which I've added is actually the ability to send commands to Captain Buzz. So if we go to say command, Buzz, fly heading 100 for 10 seconds. And then it understands the command I've sent, sends it to the plane. And then if we go back to the flight plan, you can see she's now flying, heading 100 degrees for 10 seconds. And then after that, we'll go back to doing the left-hand turns and then right-hand turns. Now, one of the other nice things that we can do is get Buzz to perform aerobatics. In particular, Buzz is now able to fly loop-the-loops really well. She just loop the loops all on her own. So we can even command these from a watch. Buzz, fly in a loop. And as it processes the command, then when it's finished its current thing, you can see the servos have just pulled back. 
So Buzz is uh, trying to pull back like this, fly over, and then she comes out of the loop and tries to fly onto a heading. What's next for Buzz then? Is that a two-man well, job? Well, <laughs> as of two days ago, it was doing a smartphone to watch integration, and Ollie's already done it. So <laughs> <laughs> I need to plan the next thing. So we need to fly the smartwatch integration system, which we've not tested yet. But I'd really like to try some novel new GPS-free navigation technologies. So we can do some cool stuff with Wi-Fi. We can plug a software-defined radio into the bottom of the smartphone and use radio signals that are GPS-based to navigate, which would be quite cool. Um, lots of work on that has been done in the past, but not on a smartphone, on a drone, a fully autonomous drone that costs less than £100 to make. And also Vision, there's some cool stuff we could do with OpenCV, the graphical processors on the smartphone, and processing the optical flow of the, the scene underneath. So GPS free navigation for the drone is my next aim. Lots of government agencies are coming to us and they say, we want our system to be assessed by your experts. How secure is it? Should we spend more on security? And um, well, okay, so how many experts should we so ask? Only two channels coming out of the smartphone, but with an even more complicated square wave going on and this board of op-amps, we can unpick four channels. So that 